Hey everyone, how are you all doing? So I'm sure you're all doing great. Now friends, the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam is one sure shot way or the foundation or the gateway for you to enter the fascinating world of Amazon AWS. And in case you are also preparing for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam, then this is the video you must watch. And in today's video, my friends, I'm going to share with you exam strategy how to identify keywords in any exam, any question. And then I will also tell you how to pick the correct answers based on the same. And yes, I can really assure you that these techniques will really help you to understand the question, spot the correct answer and get high scores in the real exam. And not just that, my friends, besides we understand the strategy to dissect the question better, I will also give you AWS official documentation so that you can do some self-study and also validate the answer. So let's not wait further and let's straight away dive into the first question. So let's begin the part 24 with question number 196. Now friends, this question is asking or talking about the customer's responsibility inside the AWS shared responsibility model. Now friends, the AWS shared responsibility model is a very important concept and you will definitely get some questions around it. So let me first break down this concept for you and then we will jump back to the question and check out the answers. So first of all, please understand in the cloud when you deploy your application or whenever you're using the cloud, there are a lot of various components or the services that are need to be taken care of. For example, to start with, you have infrastructure, you have the premises in which the cloud servers are procured. Then you also have hardware, other hardwares, for example, hard disk or any other components. Then on top of that, you majorly have some softwares, operating systems. And on top of these operating systems, you also have the customer software application and application data. Now the responsibilities of all these services and the components has to be divided. And this division of responsibility is actually known as AWS shared responsibility model. Now some of the components and the services are taken care by the AWS or the service provider and some of them are shouldered by the customer. And this is a very important concept, my friends, whenever you're dealing in cloud, it is a very similar concept. Same concept exists in AWS. It also exists in Microsoft Azure and Google GCP or any other cloud for that matter. So this is the overall breakdown of the concept. Now, let me show you some documentation from the AWS. So here you can see the shared responsibility model. To start with, AWS is saying that the security and the compliance is the shared responsibility between the AWS and the customers. So here I want to start with this diagram here or probably I will jump to this documentation here and now in this diagram my friends you can see two major colors or two major sections here the first one is shouldered by the AWS or the cloud provider and the second one here on the top which is colored in blue is shouldered by the customers for example you and me or the companies so here you can see to start with I'm starting from the bottom you can see that the AWS is responsible for regions availability zones edge location hardware particularly hardware and also the global infrastructure. And not just that, AWS is also responsible for the compute, storage, databases, networking and software. But when it comes to the customer, now as a customer, you are responsible for the client side data, encryption, data integrity and also the server side encryption, networking traffic, operating system, network and firewall configuration. You are also responsible for the platform, application, identity and access management, which is also known as IAM. And a question on IAM is just coming up. So stay around in this video. And then you're also responsible as a customer, of course, for the customer data. Now, a very similar concept, as I mentioned, is also existing in Azure and Google GCP. I want to take you to the Azure documentation because I feel in the Azure documentation, this concept is explained much more clearer way. So here it comes. So here you can see that we have this diagram here. Now I will start once again from the bottom. So first of all, you have to understand this color schema here. The Microsoft or the cloud provider is denoted in this light blue color. And then we have this customer, which is denoted in this dark blue color. And where it comes to the shared responsibility model, you can see this square, which is diagonally cut into two colors. Now let's start to understand how these responsibilities are actually shared between the cloud provider and the customers. Now here you can see on the right hand side, you can see that as you move from the on premises, to the IAS, which is infrastructure as a service, and then you move towards PaaS or SaaS, 
more of the responsibilities are moving toward the Microsoft or the cloud provider. So here you can see on the extreme right in the on premises category, you can see all the responsibilities are to be shouldered by the customer. But as we move towards the IAS, you can see some of the responsibility from the bottom is now shouldered by the Microsoft. And then as we move towards the pass or SaaS, more and more responsibilities are now shouldered by the cloud provider. So here you can see as we move towards the SaaS, which is software as a service, Microsoft is responsible for physical data center, physical network, physical host operating system, network controls, applications, and then the Microsoft and you are sharing the responsibility for the identity and directory infrastructure. And then as we move ahead, you are solely responsible for the accounts and identities and then the devices and the information and the data. So in this documentation from the Microsoft Azure, you can really understand how exactly this shared responsibility model. And then you can also check out and also link this information with the AWS documentation. And I will share both the links in the documentation in the description box. Now coming back to the question, let's read what are the options given here. The option A is establish the global infrastructure. Option B, perform client side data encryption. Option C, configure IAM credentials. Option D, secure edge locations. Last option, option E, patch Amazon RDS DB instances. And please note, you have to choose two correct options. And the very first correct option is option B, perform client side data encryption. And the second correct option is option C, configure IAM credentials. So you can match off these options with the documentation that I just showed. But here also my friends, I want to further help you in the question whenever you are seeing the customer's responsibility. In these kind of questions, you can always eliminate the options which have the words like data center, physical hardware or the infrastructure or maybe the hypervisor because these are always the responsibility of the cloud provider such as AWS. And I hope these exam tips will really help you in the real exam. Now with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 197, it says that which of the following actions are controlled with AWS identity and access management IAM. And once again, you have to choose two correct answers. And the options given are option A, control access to AWS service APIs and to the other specific resources. Option B, provide intelligent threat detection and continuous monitoring. Option C, protect the AWS environment using multi-factor authentication. Option D, grant user access to the AWS data centers. And option E, provide firewall protection for the application from common web attacks. Now let's check out the correct answer. The first correct answer is option A, control access to the AWS service APIs and to the other specific resources. And why this is a correct answer? Because the IAM allows you to manage permissions and the access to the various AWS service APIs and the specific resources such as Amazon S3 buckets, EC2 resources and many more. And also my friends, the IAM, which is the identity and access management, it provides you the fine grain control over what actions users and roles can perform within the AWS environment. Now moving to the second correct answer and that is option C, protect the AWS environment using multi-factor authentication, better known as MFA. And it's a very important concept my friends, multi-factor authentication because this is one security measure that almost all of us are encountering every day. So for example, that SMS with the OTP that comes in your mobile and also the other apps that you might be using, for example, Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator, all are examples of multi-factor authentication. Now the IAM supports the multi-factor authentication, which really adds an extra layer of security to the AWS account. And please understand that the multi-factor authentication requires the users to provide two or more forms of identification. For example, password and a temporary authentication code from a virtual MFA device or the hardware like MFA token before they can actually access any AWS resource. So I hope you understood the concept of AWS identity access management and the multi-factor authentication. But let's extend our knowledge with this documentation. Here you can see that this documentation is saying you why use IAM and here it says that use AWS identity and access management to provide and scale workload and the workforce access securely supporting your agility and innovation in AWS. And it's a very similar concept that also exists in Microsoft Azure as IAM. And also if you further go down in the documentation, you can understand how exactly the IAM works. And there is a very neat diagram given here that will help you to understand this concept further. 
And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 198. The question is saying a company needs to simultaneously process hundreds of requests from different users. Now, which combination of AWS service should the company use to build an operationally efficient solution? And your options are option A, Amazon Simple Q Service or better known as Amazon SQS and AWS Lambda. The second option is AWS Data Pipeline and Amazon EC2. And the third option is Amazon Kinesis and Amazon Athena. And the last option is AWS Amplify and AWS AppSync. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Amazon Simple Q Service and AWS Lambda. And what exactly is Amazon Q Service? Well, Amazon Q Service is a fully managed messaging queue for microservices, distributed system and serverless applications. And on the same documentation, you can understand why to use Amazon SQS. And not only that, you can understand what are the benefits of the same and then how it works. And you can read the entire documentation whenever your time permits. But let me condense the information for you. So Amazon SQS is a fully managed message queue service that can store and transmit messages between the different system components. So basically Amazon SQS is designed to handle high scalability and allows the multiple requests to be queued and processed asynchronously. And this is super useful whenever you have large number of requests to be processed. And now let's understand the second concept, which is AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda, my friends, you can read it here that you can run the code without provisioning or managing servers, creating workload aware cluster, scaling logic and maintaining event integrations or managing runtimes. And friends, Amazon Lambda is a very simple concept. So let's say that you are a developer. Now, as a developer, you want to develop your code or want to develop anything that triggers on some event. And we do not have to worry about the infrastructure or the servers underlying that. And if that is the case with you as well, then Amazon Lambda or AWS Lambda is just for you. So you can develop the code in pretty much any language of your choice. For example, Node.js, Python, Go, Java and many more. And once you develop the function, you can just deploy the function. You need not to worry about the servers or the hardware or any other infrastructure related matter. And the beauty of AWS Lambda is that this offers automatic scaling. And in case you really want to know what is the counterpart service for AWS Lambda and Microsoft Azure? Well, that is Azure Functions. And I forgot to mention what is the counterpart service for the Amazon SQS? Well, in Microsoft Azure, you have Azure Service Bus that is equivalent to AWS SQS. And this is very important for you, my friends, not just concentrate on AWS or Azure or GCP. You really need to understand what are the equivalent services between all these top service providers. AWS, Azure and GCP. And in case my friends, you're also preparing for Microsoft Azure. We have wonderful series on AZ900, DP900, AI900, DP203, AZ104 and a lot more. There are thousands of users who have already passed the Microsoft certification using all these series. And the best part is all the series are absolutely free. The only favor that I ask from you is that please like the video and subscribe to the channel and also share these videos as much as you can on all your social handles, for example, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So please help us expand so that we can always keep the content free. And now let's move on to the next question. Question number 199 that says a company wants to migrate to the AWS and use the same security software it uses on premises. Now the security software vendor offers its security software as a service on AWS. Where can the company purchase the security solution? And this is the very important line here, my friends, purchase the security solution. Now the options given are option A, AWS Partner Solution Finder, option B, AWS Support Center, option C, AWS Management Console, and option D, AWS Marketplace. And I'm pretty sure that you have already guessed the answer. Well, it is option D, AWS Marketplace. And just to explain it even further, the AWS Marketplace is an online store that offers a wide selection of third-party software, including the security solution that can be used on AWS. And it also provides a platform for the customers to find, compare and purchase software solution that meet their specific need. And then the vendors who are actually the parties who are selling these softwares, they can list their software offerings on the AWS marketplace, making it convenient and centralized location for the customer to discover and acquire the software they need. And of course, there is a very similar and corresponding concept in Microsoft Azure as well. And that is called Azure Marketplace. And now let's jump on to the question number 200. So a double century for us. So let's read the question. It says that how does the AWS cloud computing helps the businesses to reduce the cost? 
and once again choose the two correct options. Now let's read the options given. Option A, AWS charges the same prices for the services in every AWS region. Option B, AWS enables the capacity to be adjusted on demand. Option C, AWS offers discount for Amazon EC2 instances that remain idle for more than one week. And then we have option D, which is AWS does not charge for the data sent from the AWS cloud to the internet. And then option E, AWS eliminates many of the costs for building and maintaining on-premises data centers. Let's check out the first correct answer and that is option B, AWS enables the capacity to be adjusted on demand. And the second correct option is option E, AWS eliminates many of the cost of building and maintaining on-premises data centers. And both of these options, my friends, you can also relate to the AWS shared responsibility model. So I hope you like the questions today. Any feedback, suggestion, do let me know in the comment section. I will really try to answer that question. And in case you want to reach me, you can also email me at connectors at the rate the .com. And yes, I must tell you, in case you're looking for the PDF files containing all the questions and the answers for all these exam series, then you must join the community membership. And towards the end of the video, I can request you to please like the video. It really takes loads of effort to bring all these questions, validate the answers, bring the documentation to you. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon and share this video with your family and friends. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.